Hi everyone, I'm Mike Walteri, Forrester Principal Analyst and your host of this special edition of Forrester Technopolitics. I'm here with Eric Siegel, founder of Predictive Analytics World, and we're here at Predictive Analytics World. Hi, Eric. Hey, Mike. Let's talk day. about privacy and big data. Okay, is great. That, privacy. Is that yeah. a subject you're interested in? I, I am. I think that pri privacy considerations are important, right? So here at Predictive Analytics World, there's so many case studies uh, presented on the benefits, the value to organizations, and also to the end consumer and end users of predicting behavior to drive decisions, making operations more effective. Well, there's benefits, but it yeah. seems like the media is kind of focused on like the big brother aspects of it. Like yeah. all yeah. the information people know about you, somehow they'll use that. As Spider-Man's wise uncle said, with great power comes great responsibility. Because now all of a sudden by wielding this power, which can be used for good, that can make the company operate more effectively, that can serve us as consumers more effectively. It also means we can predict things that are sensitive. Um, so for example, uh, there was a lot of coverage more than a year ago when Target uh, was predicting which of their female customers is most likely to be pregnant. Right. So here, we're not just predicting, are you going to buy a pizza? Yeah. It's, are you pregnant? Something that people are, are quite sensitive about had not necessarily volunteered that information right. about themselves. Large organizations like Hewlett Packard and many other organizations, they're predicting which employee is likely to quit their job in order in some cases to deliver that prediction to the manager, right? Your supervisor, exactly the last person you might want to inform if you're actually considering leaving your job. Um, and then in law enforcement, these, these crime predicting computers making decisions that affect how long you stay in prison, right? So these are sensitive things and there's actually no easy answer um, to sort of figuring out how do we wield this power in a way that ensures that there's been ethical considerations. There's no foolproof manner. On the other hand, we can't just decide to throw out this technology and newfound power because it's too important, it's too powerful. Do you think that some generations are, are less sensitive to this? So, on, yeah. the, on the one hand, you, know, you, you think of older generations being much more sensitive to privacy, but on the other hand, people are posting um, uh, crazy pictures on Facebook. Do you think sort of the generational will take care of this problem, or do you think it'll continue to be a problem? I think that the fact that perhaps younger people tend to be less concerned doesn't mean they're not concerned at all, and doesn't mean that the problem will go away as these as that generation takes over. It doesn't go away. It is an issue. It is a, a tricky issue, and there will be cases that arise periodically um, when an individual's civil liberties privacy, uh, law enforcement rights, et cetera, are violated in some way that's attributed to the use of prediction. So there is that risk, that operational risk in the use of this power. It's intrinsic to any kind of power. Eric Siegel, thank you. All right, thanks, Mike.